Good morning wonderful people welcome to the Lalita Sasnama live chant in the morning so yesterday we left at 76th verse now we are in the 77th verse let's jump right into it Vijaya Vimala Vandya Vanda Rujana Vatsala Vagvadini Vamakeshi Vahni Mandala Vasini so she is the goddess who embodies victory and triumph. She represents the power to overcome obstacles and achieve success. Vijaya. Vijaya means victory in Sanskrit. Vimala signifies goddess as pure and immaculate, untainted and free from impurities. Vandya. She is the one who is worthy of worship and adoration. Vandaru Janavatsala. She who is affectionate and compassionate. Vagvadini, she is the goddess of eloquent speech. Vag means, Vag and Vad means speech. I think Vad means more of speech. She is the divine source of all words, communication and knowledge. Now these communication and knowledge are very English terms. It's more of sounds. Okay, what comes out of your vocal cords is more of sounds, consonants, vowels, etc. Be it any language. <clears throat> Vamakeshi refers to goddess as the consort of Vamadeva, one of the forms of Shiva. Vahni Mandala Vasini so signifies goddess as residing in the fiery regions. It can also represent her presence in the cosmic realm. Mandala is an area or a realm of things. Even the yantras are called different mandalas in Sanskrit. Now, I haven't gotten more into that yantra aspect yet, but maybe someday, who knows. Number 78. Bhakti Matkal Palatika Pashupa Samimochini Samrita Vesha Pashandya Sadachara Pravartika she is the wish, wish fulfilling divine tree. For her devotees, she is like the wish, wish fulfilling divine tree. Pashupa Shavimochini describes goddess as the liberator from the bonds of worldly attachments. A lot of worldly attachments all of us have, isn't it? I want that fancy BMW, I want this, I want that job, I want this man, I want that woman, da 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 da, how long it goes. Worldly desire. She is the one who liberates us from that. Samruta Shesha Pashanda. This term signifies goddess as the annihilator of all remnants of heretics and non believers. She destroys all forms of false beliefs, ignorance. Just aside here, what is happening in the shift is everybody's false beliefs and ignorance is going away in all cultures. Lots of truths coming out. Lots of conspiracies coming out. Lots of things are coming out, out in the open. Why? <clears throat> because it's the Shakti style of awakening. Sadachara Pravartika. She is the promoter and upholder of eternal righteousness and good conduct. Something which we all could do with these days. right? People are rogues floating around in the internet in the real world. Number 79. Tapatrayagni Santana. Santapta Sama Hladava Chandrika Hladana Chandrika Tarunita Pasaradhya Tanumadhya Tamopa Very nice. She is the goddess who is like the soothing moonlight that alleviates, alleviates the burning heat of the threefold sufferings which are physical, mental and spiritual. Tarunita Pasaradhya Describes Goddess is the one who is a youthful one, worshipped by ascetics and seekers of truth. Someone like myself, seekers of truth. Tanumadhyā tamopaha. She resides in the middle of the body, dispelling darkness of ignorance or spiritual ignorance. She eradicates the ignorance and bestows the light of knowledge. Number 80. Jitish. Chiti Stadpada Lakshardhya Chidekar Chidekara Sarupini Swatmananda Lava Bhitu Swatmananda Lavibhuta Brahmana 
the sandati sentence and coffee is just kicking in my apologies chi is the one who embodies ultimate goal of pure consciousness that's what we all are aiming for purify the consciousness beyond all the layers of the human mind buried somewhere deep in all of us is the goddess she is the object of realization and attainment for those who aspire to transcendental knowledge and self realization i'm sure many of you listening to this are she assumes the form of pure consciousness which is the essence of existence she embodies the transcendental form nature formless nature of consciousness consciousness this is what in vedas is called nirguna this i think has come before in one of her names i'm not sure saguna and nirguna she is also the form she is also the formless she is continuous flow of bliss originating from the supreme reality the supreme reality is given a word fine but it's really formless don't try to give forms to the formless when it is being talked of as the formless the paradox of divinity is it is in form and without form as well this is where the vedas come from number 81 परा प्रत्यक्ष चिती रूपा पश्यंती पर देवता मध्यमा वैखरी रूपा भक्तिमान सहंसिका गॉडेस एज द सुप्रीम ट्रांसेंडेंटल रियालिटी बियॉन्ड ऑल मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ फिजिकल रियालिटी शी इज द मोस्ट हाइएस्ट मोस्ट सब्लाइम स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस शी ट्रांसेंड्स ऑल डिवेलिटीज ऑल लिमिटेशंस एंड एग्जिस्ट एज द अल्टीमेट रियालिटी प्रत्यक्ष Chitti Rupa, okay, Chit in Sanskrit means consciousness. Pratyak Chitti Rupa, she is manifest as the immediate and direct experience of consciousness. She is inherent, she is the inherent awareness within all beings. She is within all of us. She is within everything inside and outside of us. This is Parashakti. Pashyanti, she is the stage of consciousness where the subtlest forms of perception and intuition arise. Or my new age friends, intuition, where do you get it from? Para Devata, see para, para means something beyond this reality. Para Shakti, it will keep coming through this whole Sahasranama. She is the supreme deity beyond all other deities. She is the ultimate divine being worshipped and revered by all. she is the object of the highest devotion and adoration madhyama madhyama in the middle of something she is the intermediary stage of consciousness there you go between subtle and gross manifestation she is the bridge between unmanifest and manifest realms connecting the inner and the outer worlds just what we spoke of vaikhari rupa she is the stage of consciousness where thoughts and sounds are expressed in their gross and audible form mantra what we are doing here she represents the eternal sorry external verbal expression of speech and the physical world see there has to be a bridge between human consciousness and the higher self think of her as the aspect of the higher self she is everything with the higher self you and i we are part of her we are her in some other higher form not the physical form and the mod- body and the gender we are in right bhakta manasa hamsika she is the swan that resides in the minds of devotees she symbolizes pure discerning mind of spiritual seeker capable of recognizing the essence of truth who recognizes the essence of truth truth has to be felt inside you कामेश्वर प्राण नाड़ी कृतज्ञ काम पूजिता श्रृंगार रस संपूर्ण जया जयाधर स्थित ब्यूटिफुल शी इज द लाइफ फोर्स प्राण प्राण मीन्स लाइफ फोर्स प्राण नाड़ी द चैनल ऑफ वेयर लाइफ फोर्स फ्लोज थ्रू द चैनल ऑफ डिजायर एंड प्लेजर लेफ्ट एंड राइट चैनल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गोट study the tantra direction ida and pingala nadi she flows everywhere ida pingala and sushumna by the way those kundalini interested people here she represents the divine energy of desire that leads to spiritual awakening and union with the divine shiva and shakti kritagnya 
she is the one who possesses the gratitude and acknowledges the efforts and blessings received somebody has to acknowledge there is somebody who is receiving all what you perceive all you live as your life there is one final receptacle point she is the one who is receiving everything because you're going to leave your body you're going to leave the gender you're going to leave the country you're going to leave family you're going to leave everyone behind what is left who has gained all the perception you might say she is the one she is the grateful for the experiences experiences and the gifts bestowed upon her and expresses her gratitude towards divine and others compassion and acknowledgement gratitude so much needed in the world today kama pujita she is worshiped and adored by the deity of desire kama referring to shiva here she embodies the beauty allure and enchantment and arouses desire and passion that aspect of us which has been made to look bad as lust as this and that all the biblical nonsense right she this is none of that this is very pure form of desire whatever arises in us as desire or passion even at the physical level she is the root of that okay she is revered and worshiped by those seeking fulfillment in love and relationships so much of what i make in this channel is about love and relationships kama means desire pujita is one who is worthy of worship shringara rasa sampurna she is the complete embodiment of aesthetic and romantic sentiment known as shringara shringara means actually these days in india in all the languages shringar means the decoration what women used to decorate themselves shringar rasa means the essence of the final essence is the rasa sampurna one who is full of she represents the essence of love beauty desire and she brings forth the experience of sublime and passionate emotions in the vedic connotation nothing is verified nothing is told as bad or good everything in this universe has an aspect of the creator and we are made in that image i'm wrapping the vedas for you here jaya jalan dharastita she is the victorious one who triumphs over obstacles and challenges she represents the aspect of divine energy that brings success accomplishment victory she is the embodiment of strength and power we need the divine mother in our lives this energy <clears throat> jala dharan dar sthita sthita means be to be stationed in the stationary point she resides in the region of jalandhara refers to the throat chakra oh i am speaking she is present in the subtle energy center associated with commun- communication vishuddhi the chakra vishuddha chakra we'll come to the chakras portion shortly think or have we finished i'm not sure odyana peeth nilaya bindu mandala vasini we are now covering kind of ground wherever the divine parashakti the divine mother resides because it's showing all the localities right okay odyana peeth nilaya nilaya means residence of bindu mandala vasini vasini means where she is resident see रहो याग क्रमाराध्य रहस्तर्पण तर्पिता सो वी आर गेटिंग इट द डीप मिस्टिकल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ डिवाइन मदर ही रिसाइड्स इन द सीक्रेट सीट ऑफ ओडियान पीठा विच इज सिग्निफिकेंट प्लेस एसोसिएटेड विद डिवाइन एनर्जी एंड स्पिरिचुअल पावर दीज आर ऑल लिटिल लेम मीनिंग मच डीपर वंस फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन रिसर्चिंग मेनी मीनिंग्स वंडरफुल बुक्स हैव एन रिटर्न बट basic thing is we need to chant them we need to sing them out loud we need to play it over and over and over again till the vibrations resound in your house in your towns in your temples in your buildings and sacred spaces of worship that's the only objective here bindu mandala vasini she dwells in the cosmic realm of bindu the point in the middle of the shri chakra is the bindu in the circular form see the circular form she represents the subtle and mysterious aspects of creation where the entire universe is contained within a tiny point you see the tiny point in the middle of the downward triangle that is called bindu raho yaga kramaradya she is worshiped through secretive rituals and ceremonies known as the raho yaga 
These esoteric practices involve various spiritual disciplines and offerings performed in seclusion. In isolation, she is honored and revered through this sacred site, symbolizing her connection to hidden knowledge. Pure knowledge, good knowledge is always hidden. Other people who are floating around everywhere are just intellectualizing this Sasranama. Although I am explaining meanings to you, all the people of other cultures, it is just for the repeated asking. People have asked me, Arun, what does this mean? What does all this mean? I need to understand this. I don't understand Sanskrit. This is for the benefit of those. But the real meaning you want to get in your life personally is by chanting it. Not by intellectually understanding it, please. God is not in your intellectual brain. She is there, an aspect of it, but don't try to understand it. She is pleased and gratified by offerings made through secretive gesture of Rahastarpana. This involves offering with closed hands, like the Namaste sign, symbolizing utter surrender and devotion. She accepts this with love. Sadhya Prasadini Vishva Sakshini Sakshi Varjita Shadanga Devata Yuktas Shadgunya Paripurita This is a little tongue twister. He grants, sorry, I think this went a little, okay. Yeah, this is still in the, okay, it is still in the. Right, let's get back. <clears throat> we came a little zoom in there. Sadhya Prasadini, she grants immediate grace and blessings to her devotees. With her divine compassion, she bestows instant direct blessings upon those who seek her grace. Vishwa Sakshini, one who is witnesser. Sakshi means one who is witnessing. Vishwa, universe. She is a witness and observer of the entire universe. Sakshi Varjita, she transcends. Varjita means one who is or something. Wherever Varjita comes, transcendence of the whatever is being talked of. This is the way Sanskrit is. At time we need to make Sanskrit compulsory in Indian schools and in Indian education system. Such an ignored, beautiful, beautiful language and rich. She transcends the limitation of being individual witness. She exists beyond the role of mere observer and surpasses the concept of duality itself. My new age friends, this is how you transcend duality. It's all over the place. It's all over Vedic tradition and given. Shadgan, Shadanga Devata Yukta Shadgunya Puripurita. She is accompanied by six aspects of divine energy. You can call it the six centers, the six chakras. Shada means six, okay? She is enriched, fulfilled with six qualities or Shadgunas. These six qualities represent divine attributes. Where he has given some six here. But I would think it has everything to do with the six chakras. Tranquility, purity, knowledge, detachment, beauty and power. Again, I don't want to use the term power too much. Because in 3D, in this earthly world, people have misused it more number of times than one can count. Nitya klinna nirupama nirvana sukhadaini. Nitya shoda shikarupa shrikanthar the sharirini, sharira, body. Okay. Nitya Klinna, she is ever pure and immaculate. She remains eternally untouched by purities and flaws. Her divine presence radiates with absolute purity and sanctity. Nirupama, ni means again one who is not. Rupa is form. Nirupa, she is incomparable and unparalleled. She doesn't have a Rupa doesn't have a form, yet she has a form. Get used to this. If you are visiting Vedic tradition, you have to get used to this. Divine paradoxes are all over the place. Her divine qualities, virtues and form are beyond any comparison or likeness. <clears throat> Nirvana Sukhadaini, she grants the bliss of liberation to her devotees. Nirvana. Nitya Shoda Shika Rupa, she possesses the eternal form of 16 divine aspects. Shoda, Shoda Shika, Shoda means 16. Nitya eternal, Rupa form. 
you got to dissect the sanskrit terms like this because everything is a combination of prefix suffix these 16 aspects reference various facets of a divine expression and attributes we even saw this numerology for all those numerologically inclined even in ganpati sastranama if you want to visit that shri kantar the the sharirini she is the divine consort of lord shiva whose half body resides within her remember ardhanari shor for those who know she represents the union of masculine and feminine energies tantra the real tantra is the unif of masculine and feminine energies to pure consciousness shiva and shakti she is the shakti roopa in this shift all is going to be carried out in her style it's not that the previous one was wrong wrong and right is very narrow human concepts it's just one way of doing another way of doing prabhavati prabha roopa prasiddha parameshwari mula prakriti ravyakta vyakta vyakta swarupini hmm. she is full of effulgence and radiance her divine presence shines with immense power and glory prabha roopa she possesses magnificent resplendent form her appearance is characterized by unparalleled beauty and divine radiance prasiddha she is widely known and celebrated her name and divine attributes are well known throughout all universes parameshwari she is the supreme goddess and ultimate divine ruler she is a sovereign goddess who transcends all limitations and is the embodiment of ultimate power and authority mula prakriti now you start thinking of chakras please mula is a mula nakshatra is in astrology mula is also the muladhar chakra the root chakra mula prakriti she is the primordial nature fundamental cosmic substance from which all creation arises she is eternal and the unmanifested source of all existence vyakta she is unmanifested formless aspect of divine vyakta is manifested avyakta a is prefix is one who is not of that or contradiction of that <clears throat> vyakta vyakta swarupini she embodies both manifested and unmanifested aspects of reality where are we are in 86 my pc is starting to heat up here hopefully i can cover till 97 which is my goal 87 vyapini vidhi vidhikara vidya vidya swarupini vidya means knowledge avidya maha avidya maha kameshanayana kumuda hlad kaumudi oh wow she is all pervading and encompassing the entire universe with her divine presence she transcends all boundaries all limitations permeating every aspect of creation get that if you understood that line you understood shakti she is everywhere within outside within us everything we are not talking about some one idol in some isolated temple in one corner of india she is everywhere in throughout the creation she is the one who is even reading this she is the one who is, who is even speaking through me right now vividha kara she assumes various forms and appearances manifesting in diverse and countless ways vidya vidya swarupini vidya is knowledge <coughs> vidya and avidya she is the embodiment of knowledge and wisdom she is even beyond knowledge and wisdom okay think of that vidya avidya swarupini knowledge and no knowledge is there such a thing like no knowledge think about it maha kameshanayana kumuda ahlada kaumudi she is compared to the moon which brings delight and joy to the lotus like eyes of kamesha lord shiva okay just as the moon rays bring tranquility yes नंबर 88 भक्त हार्द तमो भेद भानुमद भानु संतति शिवदूत शिवाराध्या शिवमूर्ति शिवंकरी सो शी इज नॉट बीइंग डिस्क्राइब्ड एज अ कंसोर्ट ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा भक्त हार्द शी इज कंटीन्यूअस रेडियंस दैट डिस्पेल्स डार्कनेस इन द हार्ट्स ऑफ डिवोटीज शिवदूत शी इज अ मैसेंजर ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा इंटरेस्टेड विद द टास्क ऑफ गाइडिंग डिवोटीज ऑन द पाथ ऑफ डिवोशन Shiva Radhya she is adored and worshiped by those who revere Lord Shiva 
Shivamurti, she is the very form of Lord Shiva. These words should tell you, if these last three lines here should tell you that she is never really separate from her consort. She represents the divine embodiment of Lord Shiva's essence, qualities and powers. Shivankari, she is the consort of Lord Shiva, beloved companion. Sacred, divine union, masculine and feminine. So many people yammer on about this in the New Age circles. Read Lalita Sasanama, please. 89. Shiva Para Shishteshta Shishta Pujita Aprameya Sva Prakasha Mano Vachama Gochara Get that. <clears throat> she is completely devoted to Lord Shiva. Her focus and dedication are centered on pleasing and serving Lord Shiva. This concept of serving is not being servile. Okay? It's not a question of the 3D servants we have. You don't have to be servile to anything. Your soul is absolute. But service is the greatest purpose of all beings in the universe. Service to everything. You are being in service to yourself, essentially. She is pleased and satisfied by the righteous actions of virtuous beings. She is rewarded and blessed by those who lead a righteous, virtuous life, following the path of dharma. Shishta Pujita. She is worshipped and honoured by the righteous, virtuous beings. Prameya, see again, a uh, Prameya, she beyond comprehension and measure. Divine manifestation are beyond the scope of ordinary understanding. Cannot be understood by the mind. Swa Prakasha, Swa is one who is embodying Prakasha light, one who is embodiment of self-illuminating light. He is self-illuminating and radiates a divine light. He is embodiment of divine knowledge, wisdom and enlightenment. Mano Vacha Magochara. She translates the limitation of speech. Vacha, speech. Her true nature, in essence, cannot be fully understood or expressed or grasped through ordinary words and thoughts. This is why I say, just recite it. Let it come and visit you. Then you won't be the same again. Chit Shakti Chetana Rupa Jada Shakti Jadatmika. Gayati Gayatri Vyahruti Sandhya Dvijavranda Nishevita. I think I need one more coffee. She is the supreme divine power and dynamic force of consciousness. She represents the inherent power of divine consciousness that pervades and animates all creation. People think all creation means it go out somewhere, you know, go to the galaxies, go to the, you know different star clusters or black holes or God knows what not. All existence. Okay? Chetana Rupa. She is the embodiment of consciousness. She is the source of all awareness and sentient existence. Jada Shakti. Jada means inertia. Jada means tamas. Also think of Vedic astrology. Sattva Rajas Tamas. Okay? Jada Shakti. She is the inert power or power of inertness associated with material realm. All this what we see around the physical world is tamas, right? It's an embodied form of things. Condensed form, even as physics would say. She represents the manifestation of energy in its static and inert form. Jadatmika, again jada. She is the substratum of inert matter. She represents the aspect of existence that is devoid of consciousness and life force. She is there also. Atma, Atmika, she is the feminine addressing ways of Atma. Atma, Atmika. Jada is Tamas. Jada, Atmika, she is the heart of everything inert. Gayatri, I don't have to say much, everybody has heard now about the Gayatri Mantra. The goddess, another form of goddess, she is Gayatri, representing divine light of knowledge and spiritual enlightenment. Look at a form, beautiful form. Sandhya, and Gayatri means Sandhya has to come, right? Vyahruti, she is associated, associated with the sacred chants known as Vyahrutis. No, I don't know what that is, you can Google it. Sandhya, she is, in, she is in the transitional period between day and night where we chant the Gayatri Mantra. Please, those who chant Gayatri Mantra, for God's sake, do it more in this transition between dawn and dusk. Okay? When the sun has set and sun has still not risen, but there is still daylight, that is the Sandhya time. 
that is the most powerful time to recite gayatri not throughout the day she is in the transitional period between day and night representing twilight or dusk there you go sandhya is considered a sacred time for spiritual practices and contemplation why just spend a little time here on this i just got seven more to go i think i can do this why is sandhya considered a special time let's take it astrologically this is the time when sun rises which is it's going from the first house to the 12th house and when the sun sets it is going from the 8th house to the 7th house that is the sunset astrologically by the way so what happens in this time there is neither there is neither light nor dark it is the it is the transition of duality in that transitional period of duality is the possibility of maximum enlightenment this is why people love sunrises and sunsets okay 91 tatva sana tatva mai pancha koshantara sthita there we go nisima mahima nitya yavana madashalini beautiful tatva sana she is seated on the throne of truth tatva means the sense of something we even have tatvas in vedic astrology and made videos on it if you want to look it up symbolizing her firm establishment in ultimate reality or truth she embodies the essence of all philosophical principles and spiritual truths vedic tradition or the tradition in india i would call it not vedic tradition the tradition in india through centuries and millennia is all about this argument of spiritual truths and principles my goodness people on either side will argue is the god embodied is the god advaita is it advaita who is god what is her form blah 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 instead of just chanting and being happy tatva mai she is the embodiment of fundamental principles and elemental energies of the universe she permeates all aspects of creation what would you rather do would you rather be one with her and would you rather know her completely or sit and intellectualize all this pancha kosh Koshantara sthita, sthita is station 10. She resides within five sheets or layers of human existence. You have to read Upanishads for understanding this. Representing physical, energetic, mental, intellectual and blissful dimensions. Different koshas, right? I won't get into koshas now, it will become another discussion. Maybe later. Nisima mahima nitya yaubana madashalini. She possesses immeasurable greatness and glory. Nitya Yavana, Nitya Yavana Madashalini. Yavana is youth. Nitya is forever. She is eternally youthful. Beauty, form, everlasting youth. People who are trying to tamper with DNA, those nuts need to know this. Madashalini, she is immersed in the divine intoxication or bliss. Madagurni Taraksh. Madha Ghurnita Raktakshi Madha Patala Ghanda Bhuhu Chandana Drava Digdhangi Champei Akusuma Priya We are again in the form. Her eyes are intoxicated and radiant like the red lotus. Madha Patala Ghanda Bhuhu Her cheeks are soft and rosy like the petals of a full-blossomed lotus flower. Imagine the poetry that sage Agastya has burst into when he had a vision of her. Sage Agastya is said to have spontaneously composed this entire Lalita Sasrama when he had this divine vision of her. That's why he is becoming all descriptive here, he is becoming a poet. Her body is anointed with melted sandalwood paste. He is, he is giving all kinds of analogies and yet there is Bija Mantra in this. Champe Yakusuma Priya, she is fond of blossoming champaka flowers for the sweet fragrance and vibrance and beauty. <clears throat> P3 Kushala Komala Kara Kurukulla Kuleshwari Kula Kundalaya Kaula Marga Tatpara Sevita. Okay, talking about lineage here. Kushala, she is skilled and proficient in all her endeavors. She possesses expertise and mastery in all aspects, various, all aspects. Komala Akara. Komala means gentle. She has a delicate, gentle form. Akara means form. is gentle. Kuru Kulla. Kuru. 
Kuru is your lineage. She is the goddess who protects and nurtures your lineages, noble lineages. She gets rid of the badass ones. She ensures the well-being and prosperity of her devotees, families and ancestral lineage. Magha Nakshatra. Kuleshwari. She is the supreme goddess of lineage. She is the divine ruler and protector of noble lineage. Kulakundalaya. Paula Margatat Parasevita. She adorns herself with beautiful earrings. All women, all embodied feminine, loves to decorate themselves. We should be natural with this. Some cultures have gone to the extent of destroying this in the feminine beings in their cultures. This is very rude. You're just being rude now. All women love to decorate themselves. This is part of feminine. The earring symbolizes her grace, eloquence, and adornment as the goddess of lineage. Kaula Marga Tatpara Sevita, she is devoted to serving and upholding principles and practices of the Kaula. I don't know what that is, let's not get into that. She is dedicated to guiding her devotees on the path of spiritual realization. Number 94. Wow, this is big. Kumar Gananathamba. Tushti Pushtir Matir Drutihi Shanti Swasti Mati Kanti Nandini Vignanashini I deserve a medal. She is the Divine Mother of Kumara, Lord Murugesha, Skanda, the Commander of the Celestial Army. He is the second son of Shiva's family. He is the younger brother of Ganpati. Tushti, she is the embodiment of contentment. Tushht means satisfied. Pushti, one is the source of nourishment. Matir, she is the goddess of intelligent and wisdom. Dhriti, she is the embodiment of steadfastness and determination. Shanti, of course we say Om Shanti Shanti, she is the goddess of peace and tranquility. Swastimati, she is the bestower of auspiciousness and well-being. Kanti, she is the radiance of Radiance and Goddess who illuminates the hearts of her devotees. That's why it's sad folks in the heart. Nandini Vignanashini, she is the delight of all beings. She is the remover of obstacles and challenges. Number 95. Yeah, we are getting there. Tejo Vati Trinayana Lolakshi Kama Rupini Malini Hamsini Mata Malay Malaya Chala Nivasini. I can read like this because I listen to Lissa's Nama a lot. She is the embodiment of radiance and brilliance. Her divine form shines with radiant light. Trinayana, she has three eyes. It's representing her enhanced perception and ability to see beyond the ordinary. Your eyes, quote unquote, can also be the Ida Sushimna and Pingala Nadi, by the way. Lolakshi, Lolakshi, playful, Akshi, playful eyes. Kama Rupini, the one who is the form of desire. She is playful and enchanting goddess whose beauty captivates everyone. Apparently it has to our gentleman, Sage Agastya also. She assumed various forms to fulfill desires and aspirations of her devotees. Pure love, Malini. She is adorned with garlands and symbolizing her grace, elegance and aesthetic appeal. Hamsini, she is like swan, like goddess. Hamsa means swan, characterizing her purity and grace. Mata, she is the divine mother who nurtures and cares for all beings with unconditional love, compassion and protection. Mala, Mala Yachala Vasini, she resides in the Malaya mountains. I don't know what that is. Symbolizing her association with nature and the mountains. Okay, fair enough. 96. Sumukhi Nalini Subhrush Shobhana Suranaika Kala Kanthi Kala Kanthi Mati Kanthi Mati Shobhini Sukshma Rupini Sukshma. Fine. Okay, let's start from the beginning. She has a beautiful face and a radiant face. She is likened to a lotus representing purity, grace and enlightenment. Subhru, she has an auspicious, well-defined eyebrows. Look at how detailed it is characterized. I hope you are learning something from this. Well-defined eyebrows. 
You see, to come to South India, you will see temples of goddess sculptures everywhere with an eye to detail. Why? This particular force, this particular Shakti, this aspect of creation, the aspect of oneness has been seen. It's not, they were not spaced out taking some LSD or some, you know, on weed smoking some weed. These guys were full on consciousness. This is perceived in yogic vision. She has auspicious, well-defined eyebrows, symbolizing her aesthetic perfection and auspiciousness. Shobhana, she is adorned with divine splendor and radiance. Suranaika, okay, queen or leader of the gods. Nayika, Nayak is a male form leader. Nayika is the female leader. I think we have many all over the world now. Kalakanti, Kalakanti, she has a dark enchanting complexion reminiscent of a deep blue hue of her consort of Lord Shiva's throat. Neelakantha is the blue one throat and the name for Shiva. Kantimati, she possesses divine radiance, beauty and surpasses all others. Her luminous presence illuminates the entire cosmos, filling it with light and splendor. Chobani, she is has an agitated or a dynamic nature. I won't call it agitated. It's, it's a little lame translation. Representing her ability to bring about transformative changes. She is the one who can change and stir emotions. Sukshma Rupani. Sukshma means one who is fine. Subtlest form. She manifests in the subtle forms and dimensions beyond the grasp of ordinary perception. Last for today, number 97. Vajreshwari Vamadevi Siddhesh oh sorry Vajreshwari Vamadevi Vayovastha Vivarjita Siddheshwari Siddha Vidya Siddha Mata Yashasvini Vajreshwari Vajra means it's a like thunderbolt what Indra carries Vajreshwari Sipruma goddess who wields the Vajra it's like unto lightning symbolizing her invincible power and authority Vama Devi, she represents the left aspect, the Ida Nadi, the moon channel, the feminine part of us. Feminine aspect of divinity, she embodies creativity, intuition and spiritual knowledge. Vayo Vastha Vivarjita, she transcends the limitation of age and cycle of birth and death. Siddheshwari, again making something actualized. Siddheshwari, she is the supreme goddess of all Siddhi, supernatural powers. Siddhavidya, the knowledge of all supernatural powers, she has everything. She possesses supreme knowledge of spiritual realms. Siddhamata, she is the mother of all Siddhas, perfected beings and represents the nurturing and guiding aspect of spiritual path. Yashasvini, she is the goddess of fame and glory. Yasha means fame. Okay, Yasha Swini is one who embodies that fame. Glory bestows recognition, reputation and divine blessings upon her devotees. Thank you for listening in. We will continue from the 98th verse in our next broadcast. Meanwhile, be safe, be awesome. Go sing Lalita Sasranava with joy. And I hope it brings you more closer to her. And see the scope and vastness of all of this. Okay? Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.